Hello, hello, I'm Brutton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we will be exploring the concepts of work and mechanical advantage, as well as how simple machines can help us accomplish tasks more efficiently. These topics are essential for understanding various principles in the physics and chemistry sections for the MCAT. Let's jump on in. Beginning with defining what is work anyway. Work is the transfer of energy that occurs when a force is applied to an object, causing it to move some distance. The SI unit for work is that of a joule, which is the same as for energy. So the breakdown for work is the exact same. We've got joules, which we can break down into newtons, meters, and newtons can further be broken down into kilograms, meters over second squared. So this whole thing becomes kilograms, meters squared over second squared. The formula we want to use to represent work, however, is work equals force times distance times cosine theta where F is the applied force, D is the distance the object moves, and theta is the angle between the force and the direction of movement. When the force is applied in the same direction of movement, the angle difference between it is going to be zero degrees. And if we take the cosine of zero, well, that equals one. So the work equation can then be simplified to just work equals force times distance, and we can ignore cosine theta. This is often the case on the MCAT, but not all the time. Some classic ways you can see work tested on the MCAT are pushing some object, carrying something. And note here on the right that this would be a work of zero because the force applied is at a 90 degree angle to the distance of the object being moved. And if we take the cosine of 90, well, that's zero. So force times distance times zero is always going to be zero. So the network here in example A here would be zero joules. Another very common thing you're going to see is dealing with inclined planes. So this is where cosine being not 90 or 0 is going to really start to change. So our theta in this case would be down here. But the equation will stay the same as work equals force times distance times cosine theta. Just wanted to show you those because that's likely how it'll be tested on the MCAT. But of course, you want to be able to still problem solve if it is shown to in a different way. And now let's shift gears into simple machines. Simple machines are devices that can be used to change the direction or magnitude of a force to make tasks easier. There are six classical simple machines. We have the lever, the pulley, wheel, and axle, the incline plane, wedge, and screw. Let's first focus on the lever. A lever is a rigid bar that pivots around a fixed point called a fulcrum. There are three classes of levers, each with different arrangements of the fulcrum, input force and output force. Levers can increase force, change the direction of force, or both, depending on their configuration. Next, we have a pulley. The MCAT loves testing pulleys. These consist of a wheel that rotates around an axle with a rope or cable wrapped around the wheel's groove. Pulleys can change the direction of force, and when used in a system of multiple pulleys, can also multiply the force. Next, the wheel and axle, part of the Flintstone car. This consists of wheels, connected to a smaller axle, the orange thing in the middle. When force is applied to a larger wheel, the axle rotates, amplifying the force and increasing the distance and output force acts upon. And now probably the most tested you'd like to see in the MCAT is an incline plane. This is a flat surface that is angled relative to the horizontal. By moving an object up an incline plane, the force required to lift the object vertically is reduced, while the distance over which the force must be applied is increased. Finally, wedge. A wedge is a triangular shaped object that can be used to separate, lift, or hold objects in place. When force is applied to the wide end of the wedge, force is distributed over a larger area, magnifying the force at the thin edge of the wedge. And finally, the screw. A screw is a cylinder with a helical groove or thread that wraps around its surface. When a rotational force is applied to the screw, it converts that rotational force into linear force along the axis of the screw. Simple machines work by either changing the direction of the applied force or redistributing the force over a larger area. Either of these can result in an increased output force or a reduced input force. And finally, I just want to show you how to quickly calculate mechanical advantage. To do this, you just put the force out on top divided by the amount of force you're putting in. For the example of an incline plane, it's typically easier to just put the length of the incline 
and the height of the height. So length over h. This will give you mechanical advantage, which the MCAT will sometimes ask you to calculate. So I just want to make sure you know how to do this. When a mechanical advantage is greater than one, this is indicating that the machine is amplifying the force, while a mechanical advantage less than one means the machine reduces the force, while a mechanical advantage of one means there's no change in force, and the simple machine probably isn't doing all that much. These concepts of work, mechanical advantage, and simple machines are essential for understanding the principles of physics that are an integral part, part of your MCAT prep. By mastering these topics, you'll develop a solid foundation that will help you tackle more complex problems related to energy, motion, and mechanical systems. Thank you so much for watching our video on work and simple machines, and I will see you next time.